also of Ephraim shall not depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Amnon shall obey them. Here we see that there is to be peace in the valley of the mountains, peace between beast and beast, and also between man and man, for the lion shall not hurt the lamb, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, and Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Judah and Ephraim are nevertheless to be in conflict with the country surrounding the land, for they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines and lay hand upon Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites, though, shall obey them. Verse 15, And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. Yes, the Lord will open the way for the gathering of his people, the exodus of today. Therefore shall be therefore shall be as the exodus of yesterday, only on a greater scale. God's people in these last days shall be gathered from every land, not from the land of Egypt. Verse 16, And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Thus shall the kingdom of Judah and Israel be restored, and be given peace and plenty. Micah 4.4 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. And now this is God's light. And this is his plea, Isaiah 2, 5, O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. The message of Elijah that restores all things is indeed an additional to the third angel's message, and it shall certainly swell into a loud cry. It shall gather God's people from the four corners of the earth and bring them out of Babylon, as the earth is lightened with the glory of the angel. See Revelation 18, 1 through 4, early writings, page 277. As Noah's ark preserved every living thing that was to inhabit the earth after the flood, in like manner the restored kingdom of Judah and Israel is to gather and preserve from every living thing that is to inhabit the new earth. The kingdom restored is to be the ark in our day, and her people shall live and reign a thousand years with Christ, Revelation 24, and finally return when the earth is made new. For behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth, where the former shall not be remembered nor come to into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I will create... Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullocks, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Obviously, those who seek to enter into this ark of safety shall live and reign with Christ during the thousand years, and those who spurn it shall lie down breathless, in the bottomless pit until the post-millennium resurrection only to rise in shame and everlasting contempt subject to suffer the second death how important then that we be not napping but that we arise and put on the wedding garment now lest we find ourselves weeping and gnashing our teeth even worse than did the antediluvians out the ark when the rains came and the lightning thunder blasted through the sky as the fountains of the deep broke up. We have now seen 
that the restoration of all things begins with the gathering of the people unto Judah, and that the kingdom is complete when the earth is made new. Let us therefore do what we can to help build the ark now and to enter into it with as many souls as possible. For inspiration's own revelation of this truth shows that we are approaching the day of restitution of all things, that this is the message of the hour. Amen. That ends the reading for this evening, brethren. Yes, the time has arrived that this 11th hour message and all things in the process of being restored. So as God is bringing on this war to clear out his land of unbelievers and bring his people to the, to the, back to the land restored, the kingdom restored as earth's refuge as the ark was used in Noah's day. So let us be listening to God's messenger and the message that he has brought so that we can also enter into this ark of safety. So be blessed, brethren. Have a wonderful Sabbath. And God bless you and your family and your household and your endeavors to sigh and cry tomorrow in church. Amen. 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 Indeed, that was a very uh, inspiring and thought-provoking message that gives us a lot of food for thought. Thank you, Sister Carol, for that wonderful message. At this time, we go to our second rendition, which will be done by Brother Norbert Williams. And then the closing prayer will be followed by Brother Melvin Wallace. Amen. Yes, thank you very much. That was certainly a, well, I can say I tasted the honey. And I hope we did taste the honey from that message. I'm going to defer to my queen here as she will sing for us. And I'll do the backup. <coughs> Far and near the signs are telling of the great and dreadful day. Far and near men's hearts are failing for some light to guide the way. Lord of mercy, send forth thy rod, revealed from thy sacred page. Send for teachers thy church to warn in this sin. First dark and age. Send them forth, the men of knowledge. Send them with the shepherd's rod. Send them now to save thy lost sheep. Let them teach the truth of God. Lord of mercy, send forth thy rod, revealed for the sacred page. Send forth teachers thy church to warn in this sin. First dark in Though the mighty threefold message has been sounding all these years, it finds God's people fast asleep to the rod they close Lord of mercy, send forth thy word, revealed from thy sacred page. Send forth teachers thy church to warn in this 
curse dark and another Sabbath and the privilege to worship you. He said in your presence of fullness of joy and at your right hand pleasure forevermore. Bless each one and let us rejoice in the fact that the ransom, your ransom, your people shall return to Zion with songs of everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall receive gladness, and sign and crying shall flee away. What a glorious day that will be. Thank you for your words. Truly, it's food for the soul, the butter and the honey. So sweet, so enjoyable. Continue to bless us. Now we pray as we move on to the other presentation. And if we said or did anything out of the way in this worship, we ask your forgiveness. Oh, we need so much your blessings. Thank you, praise you, and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. amen.